Entropy and enthalpy chemistry exam questions have lots of opportunity for crossover with other areas of the specification, and these questions which I'll cover in the tutorial are no exception. Kicking us off, we have this question section from Paper 1 2017 on the OCRA specification. There are some quite specific instructions here and a sectioned answer space, so I'm going to make sure I annotate before tackling the full response. The link here to another topic is qualitative analysis in module 3, where we learn that aqueous barium ions and aqueous sulfate ions make a white precipitate of barium sulfate. Linking this to module 5, reactions which form a solid are going to typically have negative entropy changes as solids have more order. And you can see there I've got full representation of the balanced reaction equation with state symbols and a nice brief two bullet point explanation for the negative delta S. Don't go overboard with this one because the very next question has a similar response. Further down, and we can see here that we have atomization with another sneaky link to module 3, this time for the halogens, because there's an expectation that we know the state symbol at room temperature and pressure for each of the halogens. Namely, the iodine here is expected to be known as a solid. Careful with the balancing of this atomization equation, as it needs to be one mole on the right and a half on the left. The entropy change is going to be positive this time, as gases are much more disordered than solids. Next up, we have a very similar topic in a different question on the same paper. And this time, it's all about the Gibbs equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, and its links to the equation for any straight line, which is Y equals MX plus C. Now, this link between these two equations is getting more and more demanded of in chemistry exam papers across different exam board specifications. So I really recommend using the perhaps separate video on my channel that I'll put a link to at the top of the screen right now. And also at the end of this tutorial, you learn the rearrangement of the Gibbs free energy equation to match the equation for any straight line as a part of your general revision. To tackle this question, what we need to do is demonstrate that relationship between the Gibbs free energy equation and y equals mx plus c. As you can see on screen now, I've got them drawn out side by side. And if we look at the axes on the graph that we've been drawn, we can see that delta G is y and x is temperature. With that in mind, we can rearrange the delta G equation. And this is the version I recommend you learn. Delta G equals negative delta S times temperature add delta H. Careful with this rearrangement. Here, labeling up nice and clearly, we can see that the gradient M is negative delta S. And we've also got here that C, the intercept, which we'll come back to very shortly, is delta H. Now, in answering the full question, I really should have put all of that in the answer space, but it's going to be okay. I'll flash up the formal mark scheme at the end. The value of P on the graph, which is the intercept of that straight line across the y-axis, I've already labelled up is going to be the delta H, because that's C from y equals mx plus C. And from our knowledge of delta G, which must be less than or equal to zero for a reaction to be feasible, point Q, which is where the line crosses the x-axis, is the temperature at which the feasibility of the reaction changes. Moving on with a different section of the same question and keeping with this theme of crossover, before we can get to the enthalpy, we've got to first go past equilibrium here. And we're being asked straight away why equilibrium 18.1, shown at the top of the question, is a heterogeneous equilibrium. Straightforward answer here is that the species in equilibrium 18.1 have got different state symbols. And if you'd like to know more about heterogeneous equilibrium, there's a little link at the top of the screen now that takes you to a separate tutorial video on my channel. And I'll make sure there's a link at the end of this video as well, should you wish to follow up with that later. We are then asked for the expression for Kp for equilibrium 18.1. I've got to make sure I leave the solids out of this one, which is what I'd do for any heterogeneous equilibrium Kp or Kc expression. Solids and liquids would get left out here. But specifically, because Kp is all about gases, I'm leaving those out. And all I've got left is to show the partial pressure of the carbon monoxide to the power of 4. 
Here we are now back at the enthalpy and entropy section of this question and we're still talking about equilibrium 18.1 but now we're talking about the delta G equation even though the question this time, despite it being mentioned earlier, isn't directly telling us to use the equation. We've got a two bullet point section and it's very familiar to other exam papers. For the first bullet point, we need to show that the forward reaction is not feasible at 25 degrees C. The way to do this is straightforward. We're going to calculate delta G using the data in the question, and the value should come out as greater than zero. And that means the reaction isn't feasible with the data and at the temperature we've been given by the question. So here I'm going to write out the delta G, which is shown in an earlier part of the question, so I didn't really need to memorize that here, but it is definitely something I would learn ahead of my exams. And we're going to input the data from the question with a couple of tweaks. The delta H can stay as it is, just make sure you have the right sign on it. The T delta S needs changing. The temperature needs to be in Kelvin, so I've converted the 25 to 298 by adding 273. And the delta S needs to be in kilojoules uh, per Kelvin per mole, and so I need to divide that value from further up the page by 1,000. That gives me a delta G value here, which is positive 467 kilojoules per mole. And as I mentioned before, because that value is actually positive, it means that the reaction isn't feasible at this temperature, at the temperature of 25 degrees C. In this next section of the question, we are calculating the minimum temperature in Kelvin for the forwards reaction to be feasible. So we're going to use a rearrangement of the delta G equation, which is so common in the exams, it absolutely has to be a mandatory part of your revision schedule ahead of that summer exam season. For a reaction to be feasible, we know that delta G needs to be less than or equal to zero. So what we do is we set delta G equal to zero and it allows us to rearrange the delta G equation as a subject of temperature, giving us delta H divided by delta S. At this stage, all we need to do is put the data in from the top of the page, making sure, of course, that the delta S value is in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole, just as it was earlier up the page. The answer here is 962 Kelvin. Don't forget, you need to make sure that you include this rearrangement, setting delta G equal to zero, rearranging as a subject of temperature as part of your general exam revision ahead of especially paper one in your summer exam season. Moving on to the final part of the question, and we have a Hess cycle question. And to be honest, it's really rare to see these outside of the multiple choice section of the exams these days. Here what we have is enthalpy of formation data in a table, and remember that the data dictates the direction of the arrows in the diagram when I draw my Hess cycle. Therefore, after putting all the elements at the bottom underneath, I've got a load of upwards pointing arrows coming from that element selection at the bottom. And that happens every time I have a data table with enthalpy of formation data. This one's a little different because the value that I need to calculate in the question is actually one of these upwards pointing arrows because I'm told that the enthalpy change for the reaction is actually negative 13.5 kilojoules per mole. As you can see, I've made that the subject of the equation underneath. What I'm now doing on screen is reversing those arrows on the left-hand side to match my traditional representation of a Hess cycle showing that alternative route from A to B, this time via C. In flipping the arrows, I need to flip the sign on the data that's represented on those arrows. So the negative 1118.5 became positive, and the 4x became negative 4x. And the whole goal now is to try and find the value of 4x. So I'm going to make it the subject of the equation, as you can see now. And then I'm going to divide my answer by 4 to get that quantity for the enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide. Here we can see the value for 4x was negative 442, and therefore x is negative 110.5. For more on Hess cycles, check out the video linked at the top of the screen now. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. For more explanations of how I would answer exam questions on the OCRA A-level chemistry specification, then click the links on screen now or check out the links in the video description for a full catalogue of all of my YouTube content. Until next time, though. Happy revising.